So hello friends, it's uh, Harry here. So in this video, I want to talk about uh, Plotly in our Shiny app. I will also quickly talk about a, a Python program because it has some features similar to the Plotly. Okay, before we look at the R Shiny app with Plotly, let's look at some sets data set. So I'm going to open a small R program. read the data. Okay, so this program is using the Haven package to read some SAS data set. So let's run this program. So we have this data set ADLB, so let's take a look. Um, so the first column is the patient ID, second column and the third column are the parameters. So there are two parameters here, the ALT that's for the alanine amino transferase and the bile for bilirubin. So next column is ADT, so that's the lab collection date. Uh, the next two columns are for dosing dates. You have the dosing start date, TRT, SDT, and dosing end date, TRT, EDT. Uh, after that, you have the lab assessment value, AVAL, and the lab normal limit the lower limit ANR low and the upper limit ANR high. Okay, so that's the data we're gonna work on. So let's look at the Shiny app. Okay, it's called E-1. Okay, so this uh, app uh, creates the E- plot. So uh, E- plot is often used to uh, look at the lab data to see if there are data points uh, of concern. Um, some data points that uh, may cause um, uh, hepatic impairment. So let's run this program first. Okay, so you can see this plot is um, uh, very similar to the ones we generated from uh, SAS graph. So here you have the x axis, uh, it's the maximum ALT, the y axis is the maximum bilirubin. There is a horizontal reference line. It's two times the R per limit. This is for the bilirubin. There is a vertical reference line. It's a three times the R per limit. This is for the ALT. Um, so you can see there are two, po two points falling uh, to the right of this vertical reference line. So this is a bit uh, concerning. So how did we generate this uh, plot? So let's look at the program. Okay, so in this R program, uh, the line 4 to line 7, we are loading some R packages. In the line 10, we are using the read sets function to read the sets data set. In line 12, we are using some uh, condition to get a subset of the ADLB. The condition is uh, ADT must be greater than or equal to the first dose date and less than or equal to the last dose date plus 30. So in, in, in clinical studies, there are usually some conditions like this to identify the data points to be included in the plot. Okay, in line 14, we are using the condition that uh, the parameter must be Bailey to get a subset of ADLB. We call it ADLB1. In line 15, we are using the condition that uh, the parameter must be ALT to get a subset of ADLB. We call it ADLB2. Okay, in line 17, um, we are using the top n function from tidyverse. So what we're doing here is we find the largest value uh, for each patient from ADLB1. We put it in Billy. In line 18, we find the largest lab assessment value for each patient from ADLB2, and we put it into ALT. In line 20, we are adding this variable Y to Billy, and we divide the lab value AVAL by the upper limit. In line 21, we are adding a variable X to ALT, and we divide the lab value by the upper limit. Okay, in 23, the line 23, we merge the Bailey and the ALT by patient ID. And in line 24, we use a C function to keep some variables. So those variables, those variables are, are all we need 
to do the EDH plot. Okay, line 26 to 33, that's the UI part of the Shiny app. Uh, we're using title panel and the main panel, and we use plot output. Okay, from line 36 onward, we are doing the server part of the Shiny app. So in line 37, you can see we are using the render plot. In line 39 and 40, we have this H line is 2, V line is 3, so those are for the reference lines. In line 42, you can see we are using the GG plot. We specify the x axis and the y axis. Uh, in line 43 and 44, we specify the titles, the x label, the y label. Uh, line 46, uh, that's the point size. 47 and 48, we give the information for the horizontal line. We give the location and the label. So the location is um, x value is 100, y value is h line, and the label is 2 times ULN. In line 49 and 50, we are giving the information for the vertical line. So the location is um, x value has to be v line and y value has to be 100 and the label has to be 3 times ULN. In line 52 and 53, uh, we are saying that we want to do the plot in log scale. Okay, so it's uh, pretty straightforward. Next, we want to discuss the Plotly feature. It's very easy to modify this program in order to utilize the Plotly feature. So let's look at uh, another program. Okay, so we only need to make uh, three changes. Uh, one is in line uh, five. We need to use the library Plotly. Okay, next one is in uh, line 31. We need to use a Plotly output. Previously, it's a plot output. The third change is in line 38. We need to use render plotly. Previously, it's a render plot. Okay, now if we run this app, you can see it looks almost the same as before. But if you hover the mouse over those data points, you will be able to see the x value and the y value like this. So this point tells you that uh, the x is 1.07 times the upper limit, the y value is 0 0.6 times the upper limit. And if you look at this point, x is 5.97 times the upper limit, or y is uh, 0 0.4 times the upper limit. If you hover the mouse over those labels, they also give you some information. Another advantage for Plotly is that it allows you to save the plot. So if you don't use the Plotly feature, you have to uh, add some uh, code to your program to get the download function. But uh, Plotly already gives you uh, that function here. You can download this plot as a PNG. Uh, figure. So that's very that's a very nice feature of Plotly. Okay, um, next I want to talk about a, a Python program. Uh, the reason I want to talk about it is uh, this Python program can also show the x value and the y value. Um, this is not using Plotly though. Uh, this is just a regular matplotlib. So this program generates the spider plot. So in oncology, we often uh, create the spider plot. So let's run this uh, program. Okay, so you can see the x-axis is treatment duration. The y-axis is percent change from baseline in sum of diameters. If you hover the mouse over uh, uh, the data points, you will see the x value and the y value in the lower right corner of this figure. Okay, um, so let's quickly walk through this Python program. It's it's quite a it's quite a simple. So in line two and three, we are importing two two modules, the matplotlib and pandas. In the line five, we are using the read sets function to get to read a sets data set. In line six and seven, we are using some conditions to get a subset of df. 
and we call it DF2. So the condition is investigator uh, is uh, the evaluator must be investigator. Uh, we use a parameter sum of diameters, and the analysis flag must be Y. In the line eight, um, we are creating a new variable ADY2. So basically, we are converting the day to months. Uh, in the line 10 and uh, 11, we are adding some new data point using this dot lock. So these two lines say that uh, if the baseline flag is Y, we let ADY2 be 0, we let the percent change be 0. So we are creating the origin point for the, for the spider plot. So if we look at the plot quickly, it's this point. So this point doesn't come with the tumor data. So we have to create this in the program. OK, uh, line 12, we apply this set index uh, to the variable ADY2. This is very necessary. If we don't do this, the plot will not be correct. So I want to quickly show this. OK, so you can see it's not right. OK, um, in line 13, we just uh, uh, plot this percent change by patient. Uh, in line 15 to 17, we specify the title and the label. And in line nine, 19 and 20, we just do the plot. OK, uh, I think this will do it for this video. I will put the data sets and the programs in my GitHub account. And I will leave a link uh, in the description for this video. If you find this video helpful, uh, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Thank you.